The most prevalent criticism of Java on the desktop is the lack of a clear path to deployment. Executable jars are great, but how do you know if your client has Java installed? Are you sure they have the latest version installed? Is Java configured correctly? I spent hours troubleshooting issues with Java Home, WinRAR, and the like causing Java to fail for my users. It's not even my fault. The solution is bundling Java with your game or app. You'd think that including the Java runtime environment being about 200 megabytes is too much, but major strides have been taken to reduce the size of the library. Packer is one such example, paring down OpenJDK to only about uh, 41 megabytes. It also has first-class support for libgdx. As of JDK 9, Java Packager is a great alternative to Packer that can bundle the official Java runtime environment and can pack it down to about the same size. Java Packager is an official Java utility. With some Gradle magic, you can integrate the Packager command in your libgdx project easily and seamlessly as well. Even though we're bundling a newer JVM, it's still compatible with our Java 6 libgdx apps. You need to ensure that Gradle has access to JDK 9 or 10. If you build from the command line, that means setting the Java home environment variable. In IDEA, you want to make sure your Gradle JVM is set appropriately. This process will fail miserably if you are using an old project setup, so make sure to download the latest from libgdx.com. Now we want to write the Gradle code for Java Packager in our project. You can follow along or copy the sources below. I'll open the build.gradle in the desktop project. I'm no expert in Gradle, so kudos to Michael Hoffer for the original code that this is based on. We can run the Gradle task and it will build the project and create a distributable with the bundle JRE. This is fantastic, but notice the file size is still large. We're going to write a couple more Gradle tasks to reduce the size. This task erases the runtime folder. Now this task uses another utility called JLink to make a reduced version of the JRE.
Notice I'm only including Java modules needed by most libgdx games. However, you are welcome to add others as needed. Modify this line if you get any class not found exceptions. See the Java documentation on modules. Each Java class lists which module it belongs to. Now when I run task create final app bundle, it makes a really slim executable located in folder distributable and is ready for deployment. Zip this directory up and you're good to go. Icons are important for the presentation of the game, however, so let's add code for that. Windows takes ICO files, Linux, PNG, and Mac ICNS. There are web tools to generate these if you don't already have them. Just make sure to place them in the desktop folder. Ensure that the name of the files match what you specify in code. I'll run create final app bundle again. Works great, looks very snappy, but you'll notice that it only builds for the operating system I'm currently running. I'm going to have to start Linux and repeat the process there. This also applies to Mac, which creates an app bundle for your users, 
but I don't have a proper Mac to demonstrate that on, unfortunately. If you choose to run LWJGL3, you have to specify a certain JVM argument for your app to work. We just need to add some OS-specific code to Java Packager. This way you can sync the same project code across all of your OS's and pack them quickly. I like using this technique. It feels very clean. I used to use Launch4j and other apps to much disappointment. Having the Gradle task is very convenient. Also, including a Windows icon is very easy, so plus one against Packer. The downside to this new technique is that Java no longer supports 32-bit. That doesn't matter to most users. LWJGL3 isn't even compatible with 32-bit uh, Linux, but it might still be a deal breaker for some. Also, having to launch multiple OS's is a pain in the ass, but I already had to do that before to chmod my files for Linux. I hope that's helpful to you all. I don't always have the time to make videos, but if I find something useful to the community, I'm always eager to share. Thank you.